Now that we've seen the procedure, let's look at another non-dimensionalization example. This example comes from section 3.5 of the book, and the equation is a differential equation model for if we have a metal hoop that has a bead on it that can move freely, and the hoop is spun. And the equation is basically saying F, where equals MA. So MA is over on this side, mass times these two things combined to create our acceleration term. And then we have three different forces in the system. One is a drag or damping force uh, of, for motion along the hoop. One is the force of gravity pulling the hoop towards the bottom. And the other is the centrifugal force getting generated by the rotation. So that's where this equation comes from. And we're going to non-dimensionalize and then after we non-dimensionalize, we're going to look at under what condition the second derivative term is small. We haven't worked with second derivatives before, so it would be convenient if we were able to ignore this term. And after our non-dimensionalization process, we're going to see when we're able to ignore that term. To start, we identify the variables. They are theta and t. And then we identify the parameters. We have m, we have r, we have b we have g, and we have omega. Now I'll identify the dimensions. It's likely that I'm only going to need the dimensions of the variables to work on this problem, so let's take a look at those. The dimension of t is time. What about the dimension of theta? Well, actually, you might not think of it this way, but theta is a ratio of two lengths. The length of this arc to um, the length of this radius. And so because it's a ratio of two lengths, theta is actually dimensionless. Now I introduce my non-dimensionalizing constant t0. I'll choose the value of that later. And I introduce my non-dimensional variable. Theta is already non-dimensional, so I'll leave that alone. And then I introduce tau, which is my variable t, divided by the constant t naught, and I reorganize that as t is equal to tau t naught. Now, I'm ready to substitute this information back into the original equation and simplify. Writing the equation out, I have m r d squared theta d tau t naught, the quantity squared, is equal to negative b d theta d tau t naught minus m g sine theta plus m r omega squared sine theta cosine theta. I'm going to divide through by m r and multiply through by t naught squared so that I have a non-dimensional quantity on this side of the equation. After dividing through by m r and multiplying through by t naught squared, this is the equation that I'm left with. I know that theta and tau are both dimensionless, so I know that this term is dimensionless. Since every single other term can be added to this term by dimensional homogeneity, every one of these terms is dimensionless. That means that I'm now ready to identify my dimensionless groups. By dimensionless group, I mean a group of parameters or constants that when put together has no dimension, but where each of the individual contributing parameters actually does have a dimension. I'm seeing three different dimensionless groups, b t naught over m r, g t naught squared over r, and omega squared t naught squared. I have one arbitrary constant that I have control over, that's t naught, and so I get to choose t naught so that one of these groups disappears and becomes one. There's a few different choices we could make there, specifically three. A natural choice might be to get rid of the term with the gravity constant in it, and that's because the other terms are going to end up, there's going to be parameters substituting for these dimensional groups, and then the term that I get rid of is just going to go away, it's going to become a one. Gravity is not really a knob. It's not something that I can change. 
while omega is something I might have control over, it's how fast my hoop is spinning, and I might actually also have control over this friction constant. So uh, why don't I choose to get rid of the parameter that I'm gonna have the least control over? To get rid of that group, I set t naught equal to the square root of r over g, so that if I substitute back in that value of t naught, this center group would become one. And then I need to simplify these other groups by substituting in this new expression for t naught. Here are my new non-dimensional groups, the ones that are left after doing this substitution. The next step is to assign a new parameter to each of these co non-dimensional combinations and rewrite our equation. I'll always choose a Greek letter for these new non-dimensional parameters, so I'm gonna call this one beta because there's that b in the numerator, and then I'm just gonna call this one gamma um, because it's the next Greek letter uh, that we use. Rewriting the equation, using prime for our derivatives because they're with respect to our non-dimensional time variable tau rather than being with respect to t, I have theta double prime is equal to negative beta theta prime minus sine theta plus gamma sine theta cosine theta. This is a much simpler expression to look at than the original expression and is giving us a pair of parameters whose impact on the system we could explore. If you're interested in reading more about this system, uh, there's a discussion of this particular system in our textbook.